Hello and welcome back to Plain Simple. Today we're going to be looking at how to measure uh, run out on a crankshaft. Uh, we can measure run out. Uh, let's start from the beginning. What is run out? Run out is a defect or a deviation from an intended shape of a rotating assembly. Uh, I'll give you an example. This crankshaft is, this particular crankshaft is from an aircraft from horizontally opposed uh, reciprocating piston engine. Up here, this is the propeller mounting flange. This is, well, flange where the propeller, this is the front of the aircraft, front of the engine. This is where you would mount the propeller in this particular case. This flange, you would want it to run perfectly perpendicular in a plane perpendicular to the center line of the crankshaft. If that flange, that plane of rotation, wobbled any at all, it would cause vibrations on your propeller, which you don't want. That's, a, that's an indication of a bent crankshaft. Uh, we're also going to look at run out on the journal bearings, which all those points of support of the crankshaft are all in a line. So that as the crankshaft rotates, it rotates about the points of support, which are the bearing journals, the bearing supports. These are the bearings that support the crankshaft, the rotating assembly. So all of these are supposed to be concentric or in a line and not have any deviation from there. If you had run out here, it would, be, it would mean the wobble in the rotating plane. If you had run out or a deviation from its intended shape of a rotating assembly, if you had run out in one of the crankshaft bearing journals, that means that that's another indication that the crankshaft is bent. In this particular example here, if there was any run out in this bearing journal, that means that the crankshaft, as it rotated, it would be doing this. That would destroy your bearings at that location and every other location. And I'm going to show you how to measure runout in the bearing journals, in the propeller flange, as well as another consideration, how to measure out of round in the crank pins or the bearing journals. We're going to start, since we're set up over here, we're going to start with measuring out of round in the bearing journal. Let me bring you in closer. Okay. Right now we're looking at the number three bearing journal. This is a, a furrow or, or a crank pin. Crank pin. This is a bearing journal. The way you would measure for out of round is to measure the diameter of this crank pin 90 degrees offset. You measure in one direction. And you rotate 90 degrees and you take a second measurement and compare the two. Basically, you would go and take a measurement and let's say in this direction, write down whatever your reading is, and you take a measurement 90 degrees from your original measurement. Whatever that difference is, is an indication of being out of round. Pretend this is a side view of that crank pin journal, you would measuring for that. A difference between this direction and that direction. There's a limit to that. And the overhaul manual to whatever engine you're working on will specify that limit. But that is what is meant by out of round. If you're looking at a perfectly round uh, bearing journal, both measurements in both directions would be identical, same, same diameter. If it was out of round, I'm exaggerating this of course, but if it was out of round, one direction would be shorter than the other, indicating uh, out of round. To measure taper, something else that you can check 
here or that you do check for is taper. Taper meaning how far away from parallel the wear patterns are on that crankshaft bearing journal. And the way you would do that is you would measure and compare the diameter from one side, let's say the forward end, the forward side of that journal, and compare that to the aft end of that journal. Whatever that difference is from one side to the other will give you an indication of taper or how far away from parallel that journal is. Again, that has its wear limits. Right. Now we've moved on to uh, measuring runout at the crankshaft bearing journal using a dial indicator. The dial indicator will give you give us a reading of any wobble in the crankshaft in this direction, meaning that the crankshaft is either bent or is within specs, within limits. You would start out with your dial indicator, zero it out, which I zeroed it before, but now then I turn the crankshaft. But once you zero it out, you slowly spin the crankshaft. And you take note of the lowest and highest readings you get out of that pointer. In this case, the lowest reading that I get is zero. And it goes up to four thousandths, four thousandths of an inch. And it's going right back to zero again. That means that this crankshaft has a run out or out of line with the rest of the crankshaft of four thousandths of an inch. Whether that's within spec or, or this crankshaft is trash, the overhaul manual would tell you that. Every crankshaft, every engine is different, and the specs for that would come from the overhaul manual. But this is how you would measure runout of a crankshaft at the bearing journals using a dial indicator. Now we are back to the propeller flange or the front end of this crankshaft, and we're going to use the same dial indicator using the same technique to measure runout of this flange. Uh, in this direction, we're measuring for runout for out of plane. Not in this direction, but in direct, the direction that the dial indicator is set. Now, you want to measure that as far out. The, the overhaul manual will give you specifics of where on this face of the flange to take your readings from. In this particular case, it is taken as far out in the diameter of this uh, flange as possible. The reason for that is that's what's going to give you the most exact reading. The further in you go, closer to the center, the smaller the readings will become, but not any less important. To give you the most detailed reading, you want to go as far out as possible. That's the worst case scenario. That's where you would get the most amount of deflection, if there's any. And you would set up your dial indicator the same way, reading where you want to go, zero out your pointer, or zero the dial face. To where the pointer is so you, you start from a good point of reference and again you slowly rotate the crankshaft and you take note of your highest which now we're looking at one two three four five six seven thousandths of an inch take, start, take, take note of your highest reading and your lowest reading That went up to nine. Down to four. Up to nine again. Down to four. I'll call that, I guess I wasn't exactly zeroed out. It hadn't settled in. When, uh, when I started turning this, but we were, highest reading was 9,000, lowest reading was 4,000, so we have a 5,000 of an inch run out in this propeller flange. So that's a wobble away from its intended plane of rotation, it's a wobble away from that of 5,000 of an inch. And that's how you would use a dial indicator to measure propeller flange run out.
on this aircraft crankshaft. I hope that uh, helps you guys. I always find all this interesting. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And uh, thank you for coming along for this journey. See you next time.